Hello, my name is Alex Arrido and I am the UTRGV Social Media and Digital Marketing Manager. Many of you have been asking me how do we create 360 photos and videos. Uh, maybe you have an interesting building or an interesting feature or you, um, you have an amazing event uh, that has a lot of people and you want to showcase uh, the people that attended the event. Uh, 360 photos allow you to, to interact with, with beautiful locations, beautiful places, uh, places that basically you need to be transported to, to understand what's going on. So, for example, this is one of the 360 photos that we took. And so, as you can see, it gives you a full sense of, of what is going on. And, and that's the beautiful thing about the 360 photos. Um, this is uh, another event that we had. And as you can see, 360 photos... Uh, give you a, a better sense of, of, of all the people and and it just transport you there um, also for this other concert so uh, 360 photos are an amazing way to to engage and interact with people um, uh, particularly when you have features that are unique like for example this huge shopping cart then uh, they came for a HESTIC event, um, one of the uh, major festivals that we have here in the university. Um, so there are three things that I want to talk about. Um, basically, uh, how do we create uh, those pictures uh, or video? Uh, the second is how do you optimize and where do you post them? Well, the first one is how do you create them? Nowadays, most phones, most mobile devices have the option of creating 360 photospheres. Um, if you don't have it, just look for Google camera or actually the default uh, Samsung camera has, all, has an option for, for 360 photospheres. Um, or look in the App Store. If you have an iPhone, look for photospheres or 360 photography. And you're gonna see there's multiple ones. Uh, the way they work is basically it gives you a step-by-step -step process where you need to map out the entire location, and um, and and so it it takes time. Um, I will say maybe like five minutes. It can take up to five minutes, um, particularly if you have a shaky hand or if you if you're in a very crowded location, a crowded place, uh, those kind of pictures are not the best because they take time to, to, to develop. Um, and, and in my opinion, I used to do this like three years ago, but you look silly going like this. And then you have to be like this uh, to capture the sky. Uh, so it's it just a odd process. Um, nowadays, um, there are very cameras. There are 360 cameras. Um, you can actually take multiple cameras and, and, and create a 360 camera through something called the uh, GoPro Rig. So as you can see, it's just basically a rig. Uh, like a framework where you can add multiple GoPros and record super high quality 360 uh, photos and videos. But as you can see, this is kind of like the expensive option. Um, if you really don't have the ability to do this, because on top of this you need a specialized software to stitch all the images and graphics together. Um, so for major ad campaigns, uh, I know that there was a major car manufacturers a manufacturer then created like a specific campaign using 360 photos. Uh, this could be a good option, uh, but for for on on the cheaper side, um, there is a camera called the Ricoh Theta, which is this one, and the Ricoh Theta is it's an amazing little camera actually. Um, it's not that expensive. Um, right now, it's running around 200. I seen it for 250. 350. Um, well, this in this particular case, this is the Ricoh Theta S. And, and so this little camera um, allows you to take quick photos. Um, this was amazing last year. Uh, this year, there are very cameras. 
but um, the ability for this picture, this little camera to take photos at night it's amazing uh, I have not seen a better uh, HDR uh, rendering software uh, than this one um, it basically you just set it um, you take the picture and it takes a few seconds like maybe like 10 seconds for the picture to be stitched the picture is stitched in the camera so you don't need specialized software um, to use it and um, and after that you can just transfer it to your phone and you're good to go um, the, the, there is no ability to expand the memory so you need to keep that in mind but in all honesty um, you can take a lot of pictures and and just transfer them later on to your computer uh, you really don't need that that much space the pictures are not huge um, but they're decent quality um, in this case for example this picture was taken using the Ricoh Tera so as you can see it's sharp um, not the sharpest just sharp and if we expand it you're gonna see what I mean by when I said that it's, it's already old um, it is a good quality especially if you see it on a mobile device but as you can see there is a little bit of distortion there is a little bit of, of, of fuzzy areas um, not very sharp lines I mean you cannot read nothing here so um, that's the drawback of, of the Ricoh Tera um, it, it was great last year but this year there are very cameras um, now one of the cameras that just came out is the Samsung Gear 360 the Gear 360 it's it's an amazing little camera unfortunately it's only compatible with the Samsung phone you need to have a Samsung um, Galaxy in my case is the S7 uh, to be able to use uh, the, the camera this little camera takes double the resolution of the Ricoh Tera and uh, almost double the resolution and the video is, is of a better quality uh, now the main issue I have with this one is the pictures are not stitched on the camera they're actually stitched on a specialized app that you need to download on your phone um, and so you basically need to transfer the raw file uh, to your well the unstitched file to your phone and then from your phone um, you the phone with this app uh, stitches the, the the graphic together um, you can also do it on a, on a desktop uh, there is a special app that you can use to to stitch uh, I have seen the app I have used the app and I still prefer the 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 mobile phone uh, the mobile app phone because on the on the desktop version I find it and it's very slow and it's not mm, maybe it's not as updated uh, in terms of like the stitching quality as the, the the mobile app so the cool thing about this one is then you can exchange the batteries there there has like a little um, there's a, a, an option for you to add batteries um, so for example you can have multiple batteries if you have a long project and you can also um, use a micro SD card so you can expand the memory um, maybe you don't have time to move all the pictures to your computer you can always expand the memory on this little camera um, the build is very solid it feels solid uh, but it's actually very fragile this is uh, crystal so this is this is a uh, glass is it's not plastic as other um, sport cameras so it's fragile so just keep that in mind um, the setting that I love about this one then I don't see it on this one uh, on the Ricoh Tera is that with this you can actually use it independent from your um, from your mobile device so you can set it up so you have um, you can have time-lapse video looping you can have a shutter, uh, put it at, I think, the, and then, let's see. You can have a timer. Uh, you can set it up to 5 seconds or 10 seconds or that's it. 
So that's a very, um, very useful setting um, because you don't have to be constantly relying on your mobile device. Now I find that when this is connected to my phone, it just drains the battery so, so fast. Um, it's, it's very intensive on the battery because it uses something called Wi-Fi Direct. And, uh, and that just drains your battery. So I prefer to use it without my phone, actually. I just set the timer, run really fast out of the scene, and, and that's how, how I use it. Uh, the good thing about the Ricoh Theta, the other camera, is that the HDR setting for night is amazing. This one is horrible, horrible, horrible. So this one is a great camera for very bright locations, maybe uh, outside, outdoors. Um, those locations are great for this camera because it will take very, very sharp pictures, very sharp. Uh, uh, it, it's, the quality is just amazing. Uh, but this one wins when you have to use it on a close setting. Um, maybe it's dark. Um, also, this one is really bad if you're really close. So the closer you are to the camera, the weirder you're going to look. Uh, with the Ricoh Theta, because it's, you can actually see what is called the stitch line, here you're only stitching, um, you're only overlapping a little bit of this area, and it's not as big. With this one, compare it, um, you have more room for uh, stitching errors. So this area then is not covered by the lens. It, it basically the bigger this area, the more stitching errors you are prone to have. So with this one, because it's so close together, uh, you can be fairly close to the camera and you will not see stitching errors or er or misalignments. Let me show you what I mean. Um, in the case of this picture, the very first one, this one, um, it was taken using the the Gear 360 camera. So as you can see, here we have a stitching error. So that's what I was talking about. The closer you are to uh, to the camera, the more uh, prone to stitching errors. Um, so knowing this, when you're taking a picture, make sure that the main areas of focus are directly in front of the of the actual lens. Uh, so for example, in this case, the main thing that I wanted to capture was the new letters that we have, the, the new engraving that we have in this feature. So I set it up so that the, f the camera was directly looking to these letters. And so the things that are on the side are not as relevant. So for example, here, you can barely see the stitch line. Um, and the reason being is it's kind of close. It's, it's not that close. It's it's kind of far away. So that's why you don't see the stitch line as much. But this one is a little bit closer. So that's why you see it. Uh, on the Ricoh Theta, you don't see that. And on the Ricoh Theta, um, let's look at that. Mm, I believe this was the Ricoh. Yeah. So on the Ricoh Theta, so here is the stitch line, very perceivable. It's perfectly aligned here on the tree. You can kind of see it here, but not really. And over here is nearly invisible. So Again, the cool thing about the Ricoh Theta is the stitch line. It's it's very uh, very small, so the there is not that many errors on the on the image. So once you decided for your camera, um, maybe you need to edit it. Uh, well, most of the pictures that you're gonna be taking, you're gonna require one of this, a tripod. Um, in this case, it's a very solid tripod. Um, on very windy days, you want to use a tripod that is heavy and solid because particularly this camera, I, it is not the most aerodynamic one. Um, and so if it is a very windy day, the wind can actually tip up the camera. And because this is glass, it will break. It will break so fast. 
So make sure you use a very solid tripod on windy days. If you're doing it indoors and there is not a lot of traffic and so you don't think people are going to trip over it, um, you can use a small tripod um, and that's going to allow you to take better pictures. Um, and do you want to know why I love the tripod? Well, because I really, really dislike having the tripod looking like this. So this is an example, uh, a sample picture that I uh, uploaded directly to Photoshop. And, and as you can see, um, this, is, this, is a, this picture was taken using the Ricoh Theta. So as you can see, I can see the tripod. So it's not horrible, but it's not actually the best. I mean, I, I would definitely prefer not to, not to have the tripod visible. And so if you want to remove the tripod, um, it's actually very easy to do it uh, on Photoshop. All you need to do is use a healing brush. In this case, it's just a spot healing. You select the things that you want to remove. So once you finish removing the tripod, um, if you already have Photoshop open, you may as well just go to Images and then Brightness and Contrast. Just increase a little bit of the brightness and increase the contrast um, to whatever is pleasing to you. Maybe a very high contrast. It's what you're aiming. Um, you can also uh, reduce the noise if you go to Filter. Um, where is it? noise reduction and my default setting is normally for this kind of pictures uh, 3 um, just because uh, if you blend it too much it just looks weird it looks like a painting uh, but if you're going for that look I mean go ahead and do it um, it, it kind of looks cool if that is what you want that, that painting feeling um, and that's it. Once you finish, all you need to do is go to File and then Save and make sure you save it with all the metadata. Uh, don't change anything else. Um, otherwise, if you do so, uh, the picture is not going to be able to be rendered in 360. Um, if you do make your changes and major modifications, um, it's not going to be saved on 360. Um, why? the cameras actually inject some metadata into the picture so if you completely mess with 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 all the settings of the picture um, you will not be able to see it render it on on facebook or other platforms and that takes me to the next part how do you actually upload these pictures and share them well um in our case uh we love to do that in facebook directly so let's go to Facebook and that picture that we took um, let's see okay so I have a folder here with the 360 pictures and let's say that I want to use that picture that particular picture and in this case is the planetarium one so I just literally drag and drop it and it's gonna finish uploading and when it finishes uploading um, I can actually click on it and reposition it maybe there is a particular feature that I want people to see first uh, well you can do that um, once it finishes loading so you click on edit settings and here you can adjust in this case I want this to be the very first thing that you see when you open the picture uh, so just say anything and when you share it it will automatically render it as a 360 picture and that's it another good platform that you can use is something called round me and in round me you can upload your own photos uh, and, and have them displayed side by side. So for example, in this case, I'm gonna use this one, which was for Hestec Community Day. And if you wanna share it with people, all you need to do is copy the link and send the link, and that's it.
So this platform is basically a social media platform for 360 photos and you can upload multiple ones uh, for example let's look at the zoo the t-rex one and you can actually add hotspots bubbles to move to different areas you can actually uh, add text if you want to display more information and that's it so as you can see uh, <laughs> I like to hide uh, from the pictures because I like to take pictures where the main focus is the main attraction uh, and so sometimes having people can be distracting uh, distracting and and so normally I hide so I just hide behind a wall in this case I didn't do a good job um, and and that's that's it so in the Rico Theta case, for example, um, you set it up with your phone and you can shoot the pictures uh, directly from your phone. Uh, you have to be a little bit close to, to the actual um, camera, so that's why I need it to be over here. Um, I cannot be completely away because if it doesn't pick up the signal, uh, then you cannot actually use this camera. The cool thing about the gear is you can set the timer. So I can set it up for 10 seconds and then just run and it will take the picture in 10, in 10 seconds. So, so those are the basics of creating 360 um, uh, pictures. And um, once you're more comfortable with, with them, um, what you can do is you can do fun things like the, in this case, for example, we did a grad messages wall. So this was a single wall, then we uh, render it in, in in a 360 setting. Let's see if I have the, I don't think we have it anymore. Um, but it just looks interesting. It's an interesting feature to have. So you can play around with it on Photoshop and, and tweak the settings. Uh, just make sure that you don't delete all the metadata. And that's it. So I hope you have fun creating 360 photos and virtual tours and have a wonderful day.